Hey Designaholic, I'm Carrie Lawless and we are Designaholics. On this channel we teach DIY hacks, how to achieve high-end looks on a budget, and how to get top dollar when you sell your home through staging. On today's DIY we are going to show you how to update this absolutely beautifully. We've also got two matching nightstands and we have fabulousness in store for you so stay with us. hard at work and I'm about to join them. Natalia is taking off the hardware and Rondi is using our favorite degreaser and cleaner crud cutter. That's going to make sure that any wax that got on this furniture that is going to keep the paint from sticking gets removed. So they're hard at work and I'm about to be hard at work with them. I just took this drawer out. We're going to have to, we're going to actually do the drawers different than we're doing the base more than likely. Uh, still haven't 100% decided where we're going with this, but I want to show you something because when you go to take drawers out of some furniture, there's this little piece in here that's designed to keep the drawer from falling all the way out. Uh, what you're going to do is as you're pulling the drawer out, you stick your hand under, you press the little piece down and that releases it and the drawer slides all the way out so you can um, get better access to it. Here's a helpful little tip. You would not believe how quickly these little pieces will disappear. And it's so disheartening when you get to the end and you can't find the one piece and you're searching everywhere. Put your hardware in a Ziploc bag, label it, tape it to the project that you're doing, and uh, you won't have so much heartache in the end. If you take your hardware off and accidentally <laughs> shut the drawers, there will be no handles with which to open them. Here's a little trick. I just get like a screw or something really thin, put it in the hole, kind of you know, press it up to get leverage and pull my drawer out. There you go, tip of the day. We're ready to get started. So here's our inspiration. This is our comforter, which I love. So we just basically went through all of our chalk paint colors and pulled the colors we thought would complement this the best. So there you go. What we are gonna do is a two-tone effect. We're gonna paint the outside plaster color. It's chalk paint and plaster is the actual color. And then for the drawers, we're gonna use silver lining. So we're gonna go ahead and paint them solid, but you have to stay with us because we're gonna do some super fantastic aging effects in the end, and you don't wanna miss it. We're getting started now. Did I already say how much I love the super secret spy jewelry drawer? What a fantastic idea. Oh, I wanted to say too, we are going with the grain of the wood. Chalk paint can be done a number of ways. Some people just kind of go all random with it. When I'm painting furniture, and especially when I know I'm gonna add some distressing, I just like to do um, in the direction of the grain. I just like how it finishes out better. Now for this, these little pieces, I'm going against the grain, but that's only because it's faster to actually apply it. So that's only for the sake of getting the paint on. So you see how I'm going against the grain now because the grain runs this way. Once I get this covered, I'm gonna go back like that. Now I'm with the grain. If I tried to apply it that way, it would just take longer. This is what Carrie did because you don't work fast enough. <laughs> There we go, that's coat number one. We've got light over dark, so we're gonna need another coat. We'll do that in just a few minutes. Now we're ready to do the fun part. We brought the furniture inside because we wanna see it in the space. So we've got the wall color behind us. We're way off from where we need to be, so we have to warm things up. The other thing we're doing is using our inspiration, which is a piece of the bedding that we're gonna be using in the room. So what I started out doing, I took one of the nightstand drawers, and I took three colors of chalk paint, and I, distressed it, gave it a little bit of a distressed look with the three paint colors. So I think this looks really good together. We're also going to distress the edges and maybe put a little dark wax. We'll see um, how it goes. Uh, what Natalia and Rondi are doing, they are taking sandpaper and they're going to sand the edges. Now, one of the things you can do to eliminate some dust and mess is wet sand and that's taking just a rag and 
you know, just re-wetting the areas that you want to distress. However, we let this set up for several days. We try that, it's not working. So unfortunately, we're gonna have a little bit of dust. So they're just gonna use those fine sanding blocks and sand those edges. And then I'm gonna work on the drawers. Now the colors that I'm using, my base was Waverly Silver Lining, that is this color. And I'm gonna put that back in. And I'm gonna also add in Folk Art Castle and Waverly Mineral. So these are my three colors right here. And then I'm also using water. I would have preferred a fine mist sprayer, but I didn't have it with me. So this is how we're improvising. I'm also using this brush right here uh, because I just, I want to you know, have that wispy look. So that's why I'm doing that. So uh, we're getting started right now. So my first step is I'm gonna wet it a little bit. It gives it what's called a slip coat. It, it, it um, allows the paint to slide a little bit. Then I'm gonna put the base color first, again, providing a slip coat. Now I'm taking my other two colors. I'm just putting a tiny little bit and I'm gonna dab it off on the side so that I can dry brush it. That was not near enough, but I'd rather have too little than too much and come back in. I may have a little too much of a slip coat. It's not uh, as dramatic as I would like, but that's okay. Just go right back into it. The other thing is I'm going with the what would be the grain. So the grain is gonna run from left to right. Make sure to catch your top and your sides to give it that finished look. So that when you open the drawers, it looks nice. All right, that's going in the right direction. I'm gonna work on the other drawers and um, I think we're gonna end up giving it a little more drama in the end, but uh, this is a good starting point. All right, so I love how this is looking. This is so distressed. I still think we have too much contrast between the white and the gray. So I'm probably gonna tone that a little bit, still undecided. But um, I did decide to go ahead and distress the edges of the drawers. I love how it's framing it out and kind of giving it a look that's finished off. And what I'm using is just a wet um, Scotch-Brite. So, and what we found is that actually wetting it, actually Rondi made the discovery that if you wet the edges and then take a sanding block or a Scotch-Brite, um, it reactivates it enough to go ahead and take it off. So if you let your chalk paint sit too long, reactivate it a little bit and then use something like that and then it'll come right off. So we're gonna finish distressing this and then we'll figure, we're gonna do, um, clear wax on everything and then we'll figure out if we want to go ahead and put the dark wax on. Everything has been sealed with this clear Valspar sealing wax. What I'm gonna do now is antique it and I don't wanna just go with the dark by itself. So I'm gonna use the clear sealing wax as kind of like a slip coat to kind of slide everything around so I don't get something too harsh, but I'm gonna use both. All right, so I just put a little bit of each wax in here. I have way too much brown on here. We're gonna start with a clear. Oh, no, we're gonna start with clear and brown. That's what we're gonna do. All right, but I am gonna put enough clear in it so that it continues to slide around without putting too much dark. And then I'm gonna add a little extra dark in these crevices, because that's where I really want it to stay. 
And if it doesn't, no big deal. I'll just go back and add it in. All right, so there's that. And I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm just gonna wipe with the grain. I'm not looking to make this brown. I'm just looking to barely antique it. See how the dark stays in those crevices? If you apply it heavy enough, it'll stay in. All right, now I'm gonna wipe the most off of the tops and leave as much as possible in the crevices. Not as much as possible, but leave more. I'll take another brush just to make it look smooth. This is a dry brush. That way I'm not applying anymore. All right, now, here's the thing. It's challenging when you have a big surface like this because this is where it tries to really start drying up. So here's where I'm gonna apply a lot of clear because I don't want the brown drying up before I get a chance to work it. I'm gonna apply it to the entire side. You know, really you can work like a section at a time but then you have to blend into the next section. So if you can, it's just easier to work the whole thing at one time. All right, so I've got clear pretty much on the whole thing, on the whole side, and then I'm gonna go in and just accent with this darker brown. Wipe the excess off on the edge, and then just go ahead and, again, I'm gonna try to get it in this crevice because that's gonna look really good when we wipe it off. All right, and then, you know, I'm just gonna go ahead and apply little bits to the rest. A little heavy in this crease right here. Probably more than I needed, but there you go. I like to get the edges a little darker too, like the sides. Now I'm gonna take my folded over paper towel and I'm going to just drag. Now, as you start to pull the wax off, it's gonna dry even faster. So I'm just adding in some more clear so I can keep this wet until I'm done working it. I'm putting a lot of pressure on this. If I wanted it darker, I'd just put a little less pressure but I want to barely see it. I just want it to look aged. I'm not trying to change the color a whole lot. There we go. And that's the hardest part. The bigger, the bigger areas are more difficult because they're trying to dry as you're trying to wipe. But I like it. I think it's toned down just enough so where it's not going to be stark white against those drawers. I'm going to go ahead and finish this little section off and then we'll start on the front. This is the fun part. I love this. This is where you have the lines and the contours to really see your work coming together. And I like that I can see it with this. I like to make sure I get the tops and the sides. Sometimes I see these left undone. I think it looks like a more professional job if you make sure to get those. I'd love to know what you guys are thinking about how this is coming out. Also, please comment below, not only with what you think about this, but I'd love to know about your projects that you've been maybe procrastinating on or just maybe not sure what to do. And um, Or if you have finished pieces, we'd love to share. We'd love to see what you have going on in the Designaholic community. 
So make sure to comment below. Oh, I love how this is coming together. So it's got just enough warmth. I love the contrast of the two different colors. But there you go. It's not like the stark white with the gray. So we're gonna go ahead and just finish this up. That's it. I think that's about it. We might go add a little bit more in a couple of spots, but actually kind of doubt it. Now we have to figure out what we're gonna do with these handles. So this is the final product. What do you think? We love it. Do you guys love it? I love oh, yes. it. How happy was it that we got to keep this and not have to paint this? Yes, I love that. This pulled out this color so well. So I actually went back over the brown with the white wax as well. And I toned this down with the white wax, which was just some last minute decision that I made. And I like how there was not as much contrast, but if it was a different style and you wanted more contrast, you could have easily left it like that and it would have been great. So we really hope you enjoyed this design of DIY. Please make sure to subscribe and ring the little bell for notifications so you'll see all the other super cool stuff we have coming up. Also, please comment below. Tell us what you liked best about this. Tell us about the projects that you're working on. We want to know all about it in our Designaholic community. I'm Carrie Lawless and we are Designaholics. Designaholics.